I grew up building models. I loved, you know, I built cars and trucks and tanks and airplanes and mostly I like mili military stuff. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was my thing. Uh, it was just being left alone to sit there and design, build stuff that I couldn't have in reality. So when you're when you're doing models for yourself, you're almost like a little god sitting there creating your own stuff. You know, uh, I enjoyed that a lot. Back when the motion control came about and shooting things against blue screens, there were other ways. Well, for instance, on Star Wars, there were other ways to do the shots other than having to do everything against the blue screen on a motion control stage. And Dennis Muren was always kind of pushing. Uh, he had done commercials, and, but when, when Star Wars and Close Encounters came out, all of a sudden there was this new sexy way to do it called motion control blue screen. And all the directors and producers wanted to do it that way. So the guys that had been puppeting things before or stop motion animating things before uh, all of a sudden had, were in less demand. Now, having said that, the plus side was that all of a sudden this computer-aided, computer-generated imagery helped shooting with models at the same time. Uh, now, instead of having to build a, a ridiculously expensive model mover that could repeat everything and had to be small so that it wouldn't be in frame, now there could be sticks going to the model and, and, and adjacent things around the model that could be taken out later in CG. So computer the CGI helped make it easier to shoot models on one hand, but on the other hand, it took the models away. After those movies were such hits, uh, it created an atmosphere where people wanted more sci-fi stuff, more spaceships, more people in space in the future and stuff. And inevitably, the low-budget things come in to capitalize on that, on that new market, but they have the money to kind of, you know, get something in there. Uh, a new film was, uh, it wasn't film, it was Saturday morning live-action space show called Space Academy which later became Jason of Star Command. Uh, I was called in uh, because I knew some of the people that were starting to, to do miniatures and shoot them. On Space Academy, we didn't have a, uh, the budget. That meant we didn't have uh, really experienced motion control. We didn't have motion control for one thing, we only had one person that had set it up uh, and then gone off to another show. Uh, I knew enough about photography and loading the cameras because that's one of the jobs that I inherited at, at Star Wars and doing some of that kind of stuff. And I knew I could do that, you know, and I knew how to use light meter and, and set up the lights. and we made our own motion control, poor man's motion control. It was fun. You were creative. You got paid nothing almost. And you didn't have anybody over your shoulder. Just a, one of the, uh, like the vice president at Filmation would say, you know, I want this shot. And then he would leave and you would get it by the next morning. And so you had to think on your feet and come up with ways to get stuff done within what you had. And those were fun. That stuff really would get the juices flowing and uh, you'd be surprised what you could do with a camera with just some slow some motors and very acts and you know, simple stuff. At Boss Film for, for a good number of years, I worked there as a supervisor. Uh, and I was model shop supervisor for like seven or eight years. And this meant that I had a really heavy weight on my shoulders. It meant that I had to budget all the, all the possible shows that would come through there. I'd have to figure out how to do it, 
pretty much in a vacuum. I, we'd had the script to break down, and uh, the producer that, that we would have at, at Boss would come to me for all of the, you know, how many men, what their salaries would be, how many hours, how many weeks to build it and get it ready and, and all of that. And at the same time, whatever films we got, or commercials, or TV shows, I would be supervising model crews doing that stuff. So when we weren't in production doing something, I would be totally busy bidding stuff. So I didn't get much time to be hands-on. Also, for me, there's almost two different personalities you have to be. Either you're one of the model makers and thinking about what you're building, you know, coming up with creative ways to get past problems, or, uh, and, and as a model maker, to me, that's more of an introverted personality, and I can step into that personality and then do the models, but to do the, all the bids, all the budgets, all the meetings, and supervise all these people, uh, maybe up to 110, I think, was the largest crew I ever had. To do that job, I had to be more extroverted. And it, I couldn't be that and just step in and build miniatures at the same time thinking about the next show and, and how to get that. Uh, so I, I had to be one or the other for the most part. There were a couple times when I would try to do building a model on the side because I dearly loved doing that. I mean, that's really my first love in it. But I got paid a lot more to, to supervise <laughs> and do these budgets. Yeah, even to this day, I haven't, I've never worked on anything else that you quite got that kind of feeling about, you know. Every, it's amazing to be, have it be your first sort of thing. <laughs> well, it, it's, it, it's amazing, and in a way it's sad. Because <laughs> for, for, from then on, you're hoping to get that high again. You know, of, of, of building something and really putting your all into it and uh, even working harder than, than any of us probably did on Star Wars uh, and not having it come back with the same payoff. You know, uh, there's, there's plenty of films that I did better on that I, I think I contributed more on and, and even had learned enough stuff to use more tricks of the trade or things that we came up with ourselves. But the overall show didn't capture all the things that Star Wars did.